Hi everyone, welcome to The Hot Seat, a wireless design and development interview series where we talk about the latest wireless technology components and design issues for the wireless design engineering community. Today we are speaking with Pete Kane, who is the wireless solutions planner for the Microwave and Communications Division of the Electronic Measurements Group at Agilent Technologies. He has a background as an RF engineer and a project manager and his current role involves assessing new technologies to understand their industry significance and mapping new measurement needs to Agilent's development groups. Over the last few years, Pete has been involved with LTE, MIMO, and Wi-Fi. His most recent assignment involves envelope tracking. Welcome, Pete. Let's start the conversation off with discussing what exactly envelope tracking is, because when I first heard the term, I was thinking the envelopes that you send in the mail, and it obviously has nothing to do with that, and it deals more with amplifiers. So can you briefly describe what envelope tracking means? Sure, and hey, you already nicked one of my good jokes. So, <laughs> Well, the, um, the basis of envelope tracking is that you modulate or vary the power supply that is feeding the amplifier. And what I've done is to put together a picture if, that we can go to to try and understand how the bits fit together. So in the picture, we see coming in on the, the left-hand side the, the radio signal, the RF signal that would normally be used. But instead of having a, a fixed voltage feeding the amplifier, we actually vary that supply according to the characteristics of the incoming signal. And the picture actually shows a little bit of both what you have to do to implement envelope tracking and some of the advantages. Unlike the uh, earlier schemes like envelope elimination and restoration and polar modulation, envelope tracking is actually a little bit easier to implement because you, you don't take the voltage on the power supply down as low. But anyway, the picture summarizes what we're doing we modulate the power supply to uh, make the improvements in performance we're looking for. And we can look at this in a little more detail if we head to some of the plots from an oscilloscope because that allows us to see all the signals uh, in a real system. So perhaps if we move over to the first of these, um, what we're looking at here is the RF and envelope or the power supply signals on an infinium scope which is a good way of looking at it because you can see everything in all the detail you need. And the, at the top of this picture we see in blue a very small time portion of the modulated RF signal. So if you actually looked at an LTE signal and you looked at it on an oscilloscope, this is the kind of thing that you'd see going into the amplifier. Coming down a bit and looking at the big yellow picture, that's actually what comes out of the amplifier typically and the green line is the power supply voltage that I was using when I was running this. So it's fixed all the time. That's normally the setup that you'd have. And just in passing, the picture, the, the trace at the bottom, the pink, is the current that's being taken. Anyhow, so we, we've got the different components of the signal. Uh, and in the normal situation, then the power supply is going to be fixed. With ET, you change that situation. If we look at the next picture, also coming from the same scope, but now it's been changed so that we actually are modulating the power supply. So if you look at that, then the, a lot of it is similar, but the first thing that changes is, is very obvious. It's the green line, which represents the power supply voltage. And it's going up and down, and it's kind of tracking the envelope of the RF signal, but it's actually a little bit subtly different. Um, but the essence, anyhow, of envelope tracking is that instead of having a fixed power supply, you modulate or you vary the supply voltage. Now, I said it kind of tracks. Well, you don't want to make the voltage track the RF exactly. And in fact, if we move to uh, another trace, this one is showing what we call a shaping table, then this is an XY plot that shows how the supply voltage actually changes as a function of the RF signal. If it was just a, a linear relationship, it would just be a straight line. 
but you can see this is curved at the top and the bottom. And that's kind of important because it actually relieves some of the problems that you'd otherwise get into. So the um, thing with envelope tracking is that you are going to vary the power supply voltage and you're going to do it pretty quickly. You need to do it with a bandwidth in the envelope signal or the power supply signal that can at least match, if not exceed, what the uh, radio signal itself is doing. Anyhow, it's slightly more complicated answer than just a one-liner, but that is what envelope tracking is about. No, and we need those details so people can know exactly what they are. So can you maybe talk about what some of the trends were happening in the market that created the need for this kind of technology? Well, a one word answer is the need for integration. So everybody's buying phones, smartphones in particular, and that drives interest in the cost of the goods and the level of integration, the higher the better typically. Well, that's actually a pretty big deal for designing a radio. And in fact, the, um, there's a picture that I've got here uh, that explains things we'll come to in a minute. But the, there's a lot of parts that still needed to make an LTE or uh, a radio that works across the world. And so the, uh, the timing is because with LTE, you now need two things. The, you've got to have a radio that works on lots of different frequency bands and it's got to be able to cope with a, a signal that is quite complicated. It has a high peak to average. Well, when it comes to understanding the number of frequency bands, I've got a book here, Plunk Plunk, um, which is actually a book that a colleague here has uh, edited and we've introduced a second edition recently. But the, the relevance here is it actually has as a table all of the LTE frequency bands. And we can see that actually this covers an entire page. Well, the point here is that it means that you need lots of different amplifiers to cope with all these different frequencies because it's hard to make one amplifier do everything. There's too many different trade-offs you need. So the, the other picture that I've taken, and actually this is from a website called iFixit. Uh, these guys have a lot of fun. They, they rip apart the latest technical devices. And this is an image that shows all of the amplifiers in the RF in the different colored boxes. So the, the trend is that people want to be able to design a smartphone that will work in as many countries as possible and it will have as high a level of integration as possible. Envelope tracking is a technology that allows you to make different kinds of trade-offs. And so it's kind of its time has come because it addresses these two issues uh, of uh, improving performance in amplifiers, which includes operation over a wider frequency range and dealing with these high peak to average signals. Are there any other benefits or advantages that um, envelope tracking has when people are trying to implement it in their amplifier designs besides some of them that you just recently mentioned? Um, or does that about cover it, those two advantages that you just discussed? Well, no, the, in, um, there, there is something else that isn't particularly obvious when you start, start to first look at it. So if you read the, the mainstream articles, what they tell you is that envelope tracking improves the power efficiency. It will save your battery. Well, that's, that's true. You can do that. Uh, the method of modulating the power supply, if you've got, will reduce the heat dissipation in the amplifier. And that could mean that you can use a smaller chip. And that's no big deal. I mean, that's, that could be important. Um, but the other issue then is that you can operate the amplifier in a different mode. You can effectively Envelope tracking introduces another kind of control loop. For a system engineer, it's called a feed-forward control loop. What this means is that instead of having to tune everything up inside one fixed amplifier, you've now got another connection that you can use to modify how it works. And this means that with the high peak to average signals, you can actually make a more linear amplifier. The, even actually looking at the oscilloscope traces, if you look very carefully, the output looks slightly better when you employ envelope tracking. That's the kind of um, improvement that we're going to see. So you not only get the improvement in, in heat 
reduction in energy reduction coming from the battery. You can also make a more linear amplifier. Now for the designer, try, you have to try and turn this into something a little more concrete. And so what I've done moving to another view in the picture following is that we've got a, a linearity plot. So I've got two traces here and they show gain compression. The top one shows a little squiggle and that's the kind of gain variation you get. It's not much but it's what you get in a conventional amplifier with a fixed power supply. The designer has already had to work really hard to make the performance this good. But using envelope tracking you can run the operation in a slightly different way, improve the linearity and you get something like the second of the two plots which is looking a lot much flatter. Now like many situations in engineering you don't just want to do one thing and optimize one thing because other stuff happens. But this is at least an indication of how you can uh, not only save energy, you can actually change the characteristics of the amplifier using envelope tracking. What are some of the challenges and obstacles that some um, customers have come across when they try to implement envelope tracking into their own designs? These vary quite a lot of course depending on whereabouts in the ecosystem you are. If we look at uh, the, the picture showing the different component parts, the, we, we need a baseband IC that generates a new kind of signal. This is the analog envelope signal that feeds a new kind of device which is the tracking power supply. And this has to be a very high performance supply. It needs to deliver best part of a one amp of current, if not more, at very wide bandwidths. And then that feeds into an amplifier, which has probably been modified so it works with envelope tracking more effectively than it would have done otherwise. I mean, the other thing I shouldn't forget is that you actually need to nip down to the drugstore to get some smelling salts for your analog engineers because one of the things you've got to do is take away a lot of the capacitive decoupling on the supply. And this is you know, deeply ingrained to many engineers, including myself, that you normally put plenty of capacitors on there to make sure nothing moves. Well, in order for envelope tracking to work, those have to go. So you need those three components and some of the issue can be that you don't actually have access to all of them because a lot of the things in envelope tracking have been happening behind the scenes not everybody has been able to get those. So the um, other part is that for engineers coming to this kind of technology relatively fresh you need to get some handle on what it's all about and, and really internalize how it's working. So the obstacles can be you can't get the parts or you need to be able to experiment a bit to understand what's going on. Now one of the things that we can do as Agilent is to help by delivering the signals that you need to test your devices and do it in a way that can be consistent so that not only you get these signals but your customer and supplier are also working with the same thing. And it, it seems a bit obvious when you start to think about it, but it means everybody can be dealing and looking at the same thing. So if there's a problem, you can actually pin it down and explain what it is quickly in a consistent way. If we cut to the, the picture showing the setup that is one that we've recently introduced, this shows the, the MXG signal generator, which is a tool that we've provided for quite some time and a software product called Signal Studio. Now Signal Studio generates reference waveforms. So you can rely on those. Those are what the industry needs to say, yep, this looks like an LTE signal or a wideband CDMA. And the way we generate the actual signal is using that signal generator. For envelope tracking, what we've done to enable people to do more evaluation in a more consistent way now is to add another piece of hardware which is the function generator that's shown on the top and to enhance the software so that it creates the new signal, the envelope signal and in particular, this is really important, it does the time alignment between those two pieces of hardware. So one of the obstacles as I say is getting hold of parts, getting hold of the uh, waveforms to test everything and this is an example 
of what we're trying to do to make that a more practical thing to do. Are there any limitations for envelope tracking? And if so, can you explain some of the ways that Agilent is trying to improve on those limitations? Yeah, the, the limitations, I suppose, they're a mixture of technical and commercial. So the commercial ones is who owns which IP and that kind of thing. I, there's nothing Agilent can do or is really appropriate for us to uh, do in that circumstance. But the technical side of things, um, we, we can, I think, help with. Now, the, the whole design process starts in the world of simulation. And there's a few things that we've done in the way of delivering webinars and design information for envelope tracking, including one that I've, I'm referring to here by a chap called Matthew Rosales. Uh, this is quite a recent one. And this explores some of the trade-offs in using different kinds of technology to implement envelope tracking or just uh, radio designs in general, because there are many things that you have to consider. And Matthew's webinar goes through those kinds of things. So it's, it's how much heat's getting dissipated, what kind of technology, what the performance is, electromagnetically, how do these things all glue together? It's it's a complicated trade set of trade-offs. So as people look at the limitations of envelope tracking, some of them might be the bandwidth of the power supplies, the noise floor, that kind of thing, uh, or the performance of the components that they're using, the power amplifiers. You can put those things into this design environment and you can explore what it is that's going to happen when you start making changes. So that's one of the things that we can do. And there are, outside of the simulation environment, there are sometimes higher performance hardware that you need. So we, we have some offerings there where, although I'm showing in the earlier picture a particularly cost-effective solution for people evaluating envelope systems, for those that are more in the R&D side, then you can use some of our high performance waveform generators for that. So it's it's a quite a complicated mix depending on where you are in the, the life cycle. But I think there are a number of things that we can do to, to help the situation. Um, what are your predictions for envelope tracking as it applies to future developments of amplifiers? And where do you see Agilent um, the role in that in your predictions? Well, certainly I see that envelope tracking is becoming a very important feature that will help deal with some of the issues we talked about. It, it's, uh, it's not a trivial thing to implement. It does give you some new capabilities and you have to understand the uh, both the benefits you're getting and also some of the side effects. But the the kind of thing that I look at when I'm trying to make predictions, which is part of the job, a difficulty is, is usually is to check for standardization and, and find out are people getting together to the point where there's an agreement about how things should be done. So we look at the standards bodies or the industry alliances. And for envelope tracking, there are a couple of those. The MIPI Alliance has a working group that we participated in that is uh, specifying the uh, interface between the tracking power supply and previous circuitry. And there's an open ET alliance, which is spearheaded by one of the startups involved in envelope tracking, a company called Nigira. And to make a technology effective, obviously it's got to work and the price has got to be right. The integration has to be high enough to make it worthwhile. I think those things can happen. Um, it is going to take uh, a little more work. So Nigeria, as well as being a key player in developing the power supplies, they've done a great job in order to help the industry understand what is this envelope tracking. Uh, and we need that message to get more broadly accepted. Components are beginning to become available. A lot of things have been happening behind closed doors, but at IMS and uh, at the Mobile World Congress, we started people, companies began to expose now what they're doing, you know, big name companies, they're, they're beginning to describe what components are available. And so things are moving into a more mainstream stage now. 
So I think the um, role that we can play uh, does take various forms. I mean, another example has happened quite recently in one of the standards committees for 3GPP itself. This is the, the group actually defining how LTE should work. Uh, a colleague, uh, Murray Rumney, um, was telling me that envelope tracking has come up as a topic there, for example, and people need to understand it. That could have quite profound implications, even on the, the way the cellular network operates, if we can come up with amplifiers that actually work consistently better than previously if people have thought. So that's a more long-term thing. But the, in all of these cases, what Agilent would try and do is to both help provide information, whether it's in, from the simulation environment, provide equipment to help people test things, and where necessary, try and do our bit to, to broaden the education about what a particular technology is, both what its benefits are and what you need to watch out for. Um, what are some of the ways that you guys um, think c could help broaden the education so more people can understand what exactly envelope tracking is? Well, clearly today's session is, is one attempt at doing that, just to explain what it is. Uh, some of the software that we've introduced recently you can download. Um, so, and there's webinars that we provide that we've got references to later. These are all the different things I think we can do. So a combination of, of education through uh, trying things out either in software or real hardware and um, watching the, uh, the material that we put onto the web to explain what's going on. And both Matthew uh, with his uh, presentation on CMOS uh, or beyond CMOS and Gally Mars and I, that, uh, another colleague, Andy Howard, has given a presentation talking about what envelope tracking is all about as well. So typically with a new technology, you have to come at it a few times before you get it and you begin to get to the point you can be confident with it. Um, I think we've provided some of the material that will hopefully help that happen. And is there anything else that you would like to add or comment on that we didn't discuss during this interview that you think is important for our viewers to know about envelope tracking and how Agilent is trying to push it forward and um, so people, more people can know about it? Well, I think, I think we've covered most of the uh, topics. I uh, appreciate the time to be able to go through some of these because in a way you do need to get into a bit of detail to make sure that you're not only uh, appreciating the benefits, but you realize where the limitations are because there, there are some subtleties in envelope tracking. So um, I think we can help the adoption in the way that we've described. And um, I did have a rather bad joke about a certain space alien going green, ET and all that. So you almost got spared that. But no, I, I think what, what I've described already hopefully is enough. And uh, Obviously, if people would like to get in touch with me afterwards to follow up on any of these things, then I'd be happy to see that. And we will definitely make sure to provide our uh, viewers with all that information, um, even with the information on some of the presentations and the webinars that you mentioned during this interview. So I would like to thank you, Pete, again for joining us and to discuss envelope tracking for LTE power amplifier and power supply development. Um, I'm Megan Zimba, and I'll see you guys next time in the hot seat.